NASCAR scoring pylons are becoming an endangered species. NASCAR scoring pylons are going the way of the dodo bird. Put them on the endangered species list because they're being hunted down like Richard Childress is after them on a safari. It's highly unfortunate. So last week we were at Texas, they tore down their scoring pylon. Everybody was like, well, that seems not very smart, Marcus Smith, who's already at the center of all this controversy about tracks not reinvesting the portion of their money from the TV revenue back into the tracks. Now we go to Talladega this weekend, and guess what? They tore down a scoring pylon as well. So an SMI track and an ISC track in back-to-back -back weeks have removed the scoring pylon. And this comes in recent years where we lost one at Bristol, we lost one at Watkins Glen as well. And I'll be completely honest, these are actions detrimental to the fan experience at the track. I mean, it's so controversial at this point, they got William Byron to comment on it, unprovoked on social media. And that guy doesn't wade into controversy at all. So you can tell. This is a pretty big deal. Next time I go to the racetrack, I'm going to have my high-vis shirt and high-vis vest on because I'm very tall, and I also don't want to get hunted down like a scoring pylon does. The pylons are crucial to the at-track fan experience. In a quick glance, you can look over. You can see the running order. You can find out where your driver is more often than not. Not all of them go to 43, but you can get a pretty good gist of where they're at. You can also see the lap count. Drivers have talked about how critical it is for them because during a green flag run or even under caution, they'll glance over. They can see the running order. They can see what the lap count is. Denny Hamlin said after he crashed last week at Texas, he was going down pit road. He went to look for the pylon and it wasn't there. You know what's in place of the scoring pylon at Texas now? A pickleball court. I don't think that really helps out the fan experience that much, but hey, at least it's trendy and fun, right? No, it's not. It's not. Just put the scoring pylon back. So you have them getting rid of them. What's the replacement for them? Well, good news. NASCAR and SMI ISC have said that you can just look at the big video boards around the track and they'll have a ticker going across. You remember the crawler, like how TNT, ESPN, Fox, and NBC all used to have it go across the top of the screen and everybody was like, it takes forever to get to 27th place so we can find out where Matt Benedetto is running. You know what I'm talking about. So they got rid of that. They put the scoring pylon on. So now you can just look and see where everybody's running at. That's great. And now at the track, NASCAR said, that pylon, that's stupid. Let's go back to the crawler and make you wait forever. But good news is, on the back of these big video boards at Talladega, they put up a banner board. And you can see the top six running positions, which doesn't really feel very beneficial at all. During qualifying, on the big video board at Talladega, you could see the top five in qualifying which is, again, unfortunate considering they take the top 10 to the next round, which is a completely different video, but having a 10-driver shootout at Talladega and Daytona is very stupid. Just set the order by the first run of everybody. It's kind of dumb. So, like I said, they take away a big part of the fan experience by removing these pylons. And then, to top it all off, NASCAR says, well, you can just download the NASCAR app and check the running order on your phone when you're at the track. Because we've all been to plenty of racetracks that have had absolutely fantastic service. Every time I go, my phone just blazes with speed. That Xfinity 10G, which isn't real, just really makes my phone absolutely perform at its peak performance. Yeah, that never happens. Daytona and Indianapolis have figured out Wi-Fi. Every time I go to those tracks, the service is actually really good. Last year, Indianapolis 500, 325,000 people were there, and I was tweeting the entire time and checking the running order and even listening to the scanners on the IndyCar app. So they've got that figured out there. But I was on the Left Turn Cult podcast this past week, and those guys are headed down to Talladega again this week to camp. And they were already dreading the lack of service. They're like, yeah, basically when you get there and start camping, you just don't have a phone for the weekend. That's completely unacceptable. So now you want people to stop looking at what's happening on the racetrack and you want them to look at their phone while their phone uploads at dial-up internet speed. For all the kids out there, you just have to pluck, pluck, plug your phone cord. You remember like your home four cord into the back of your computer, into the router or modem, whatever it was. And then it would sit there and go, and then try to connect to the internet. And sometimes it would, sometimes it wouldn't. God forbid you got a call, then you're off the internet. Or if too many people are on, you were just going too slow. So people wake up at three o'clock in the morning. That's how fast your internet moves at the track more often than not. Typically, I'm on NASCAR's side. I can understand, shouldn't say that. I'm not always on NASCAR's side, but I can see the justification. I can see the reasoning behind what they do. I can't see it on this one. I'm with them on most things. I'm like, okay, maybe I don't love it, but I understand why you're doing this. I don't love this, I also don't understand it. Because at a time where every other sport, every other stadium, every other event, center, arena, whatever, is upgrading their video boards, upgrading the ribbon boards, upgrading televisions around everywhere so you have more information. Have you been to a baseball game lately? 
because they have, at least in the ballpark where I live, they have gigantic video boards in both left field and right field. They have every stat imaginable. They have ribbon boards down the baselines on both sides of the mezzanine level. And they have tons of information on that. They have video boards for all of their sponsors. They have TVs throughout the entire concourse. And they're constantly talking about adding more. We need more, we need more. We need to make the fan experience better. And now NASCAR is just regressing and getting rid of it. Indianapolis has the best scoring pylon in all of motorsports. It's a gigantic LED board and you can change it and do it however you want. It's not the old standard, you know, one through 30, one through 43, whatever with the bulb lights and everything in it. No, it's a, the perfect example of what a scoring pylon should be. So make your capital investment in that. Enhance the fan experience. And instead, they continue to absolutely regress, which is really unfortunate because again, it shouldn't be like that. If you want people to come to the track, more people are starting to come to the track than have before. We constantly talk about sales. We constantly talk about people getting back out to the racetrack, and that's great. However, if they don't know what position their driver's running in, if they're not running in the top four or top five, that's highly unfortunate. And it's terrible for the drivers. It's terrible for the crew chiefs. And at the end of the day, it doesn't really make the experience better. It arguably makes it substantially worse at this point. So... I hate that the pylons are leaving. I hope that we don't continue to knock down scoring pylons. Or if we do, we replace them with a much better type of pylon. And instead, we're just going to video boards on the other side of a racetrack, three quarters of a mile away. And then they're like, you can see that, right? And like, ah, oh, why? Just why? So let me know in the comments what you think about the lack of scoring pylons now on the NASCAR Cup Series calendar, what you would do about it. Like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok. I'm going to go get out of my hunting gear now, apparently, as well. So, see you. Oh, wait. You have to follow me on TikTok, at Break Hard. Instagram and Twitter, at Break Hard Blog.